In this video, we're going to be using hydro dipping paint in a way you are probably not used to seeing. Today, I'm going to be using the same hydro dipping paint I use here in the shop all the time to paint a boat. So not only am I going to be painting a John boat with hydro dipping paint, they I'm also going to be doing this remotely. We're not going to be working here in the shop. So the conditions are a little bit unfavorable and it's more like what you guys would do at home if you were doing this in your garage or in your backyard. I'm going to walk you step by step through the process. Stick around, show you how you do it. So we are on a little field trip today. We are going over to my buddy Anthony Jones. I will leave a link to his channel in one of these little spots up here. But today we are going to be painting a 16 foot John boat. Now normally I would just do this at my shop with my paint booth. But the issue is this John boat is way too heavy to get off the trailer and into my paint booth. And on the trailer it won't fit. So Anthony has access to a building with heat and we're gonna need it because it is a whopping 45 degrees today and as you can see it is nice and rainy like worst painting conditions ever so this is gonna be a true test for one hit wonder paint now I've used their paint on John boats before in the cold but not so much in the rain so we're gonna try this out I think it's gonna work really good I think you guys are gonna be surprised at the results now I'm used to painting in my paint booth with all my stuff like right there and just where I need it so this is a little different for me kind of going mobile like this but I've got everything I think I need we'll go over all the tools and equipment that you're gonna need once we get there so we got a little drive see you guys in Athens Georgia So we made it to the loaner shop. I've got my buddy Anthony Jones here. This is a 16 foot boat we're working on today. Before I get started prepping the boat, I'm gonna walk you through all the equipment that we're gonna be using today. Anthony's gonna run to the store real quick because we forgot to get paper so that we can mask off all the carpet on the inside of the boat. So he's gonna take care of that. I'm gonna walk you through all this stuff, get the boat taped off, prepped, and we'll see you guys in just a second. All right, so for the equipment that we're gonna be using today, I've got basic cleaning supplies over here. This is naphtha, the white camp fuel that I like to use to clean everything on the boat. I've got some paper towels. Of course, we've got frog tape. Anthony's running to get some uh, paper so that we can cover the carpet up on the inside of the boat. But we're going to be using frog tape to tape off all the lines on the bottom of the boat and around the edges, tape off some parts of the trailer. Now, we're not going to be taping the whole trailer off because this trailer is going to get painted tomorrow. So if it gets a little bit of overspray on it, we're not too terribly worried about it. I've got some stuff here to work on my spray guns. I've got a wrench and actual spray gun wrench. Because I don't know the integrity of the compressor that we're going to be using today i got a couple of these inline desiccant filters that i can put on the end of my gun and i can change them in between coats so that i don't have to worry about the oil or water or anything that might be in this compressor getting through i know my compressor in my shop's nice and clean because i keep it nice and clean but this one we don't know about so so i'll be changing these out in between coats so these little small mouthwash cups are what i use to actually get some small amounts of paint out of the quart cans from one hit wonder so you just dip this in there and that's what these are for I've got my PPS system, so I've got one for base coat, one for clear coat. Of course, the liners and the lids that go with those. We've got some just basic paint stir sticks. We've got our lacquer thinner. I like to keep mine in a little squirt bottle like this, so that's what I've got. I brought some extra lacquer thinner just in case I need it. This is from my paint booth. I keep this little container. It's like a little Tupperware container to keep my tack rag in so I don't have to worry about getting overspray and dust on it. And I just close this up and this stays inside my paint booth all the time. So for our paint we're gonna be using today is the One Hit Wonder. It doesn't need any primer at all. This is our normal hydrographics paint that we use in our shop every day. The color that we're using is bright blue. We're probably gonna do a minimum of two coats on this boat, maybe three. We'll just have to see how well it covers, but I think we're gonna go with two. I've got a little spray can of it, just a little aerosol can, just in case I gotta do any little touch-ups after I've already cleaned my spray gun, because that always winds up happening. I forget one little thing, so I keep a little spray can, you know, aerosol can, so I have it. As far as clear coats go for today, we're gonna be using One Hit Wonders Matte Clear. This is a flat or matte clear, whichever you prefer to call it. It has no shine to it. It is a two-part clear coat. It's a 2K, so you will have to mix the actual clear coat with hardener, and this mix is four to one, so that's what we'll be doing today. As far as the paint goes, there is no mixing. You just shake this stuff up, stir it really good, and then it goes straight into the paint gun. No mixing and no primer. So just a quick word on prep. If you watch the channel before, you've seen me prep stuff a thousand times. It's no different than any other way I do it. 
Now, Anthony took this aluminum boat and actually used a wire wheel and ground off all the old paint so it's down to bare aluminum. He did do a little bit of Bondo work and some body filler just to kind of fill in some of the little holes and nicks and dings this thing had. But just to quickly go over what I'm going to do for prep on this boat, I'm going to go over the whole boat with naphtha first, wipe everything down, make sure it's good and clean, degreased, doesn't have any fingerprints or nastiness all over it. Once I get done with that, I'm going to go over the entire boat with a red scotch spray pad, scuff everything up really good, we'll clean it one more time, get everything taped off, and then it'll be ready to paint. I wasn't going to cover a lot of this prep work, but I know I'm going to get questions in the comments about this, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. The way that you tape over this carpet is you take a piece of tape, I'm using frog tape, you can use whatever you want, doesn't matter, and then just kind of lay it so that the edge of it is actually just to the top side of this piece of aluminum here. And I'm not really sticking it down. I'm just barely getting it to where it's stuck on there good. And then roll the tape over onto the carpet. Just like that. So what you'll do is you'll kind of push the tape into the aluminum and use one of these paint can openers just to kind of push the tape underneath this aluminum. So I'm pushing the carpet down and pushing it underneath the aluminum at the same time. Now this is going to take some time this is not an easy process but if you want to have good sharp paint lines and not get paint all over your carpet this is the way that you have to do it and over here on these side rails it's the same thing i know this looks like it's a complete circle up top but it's actually not there's a lip way up underneath here where this piece comes around so what you're going to do is take your piece of tape And do the same thing, let it overlap just a little bit. Kind of push that down in there with your fingers some. Smooth it out against the tape and then use this tool again to push this underneath that little lip. What that's doing is it's kind of holding the carpet down a little bit so when you peel this tape off the carpet will fluff back up and anything that was not a really perfect straight line will be kind of covered up by that carpet. All the prep work is done, all the hard stuff is over with. Now for the easy part, which is actually spraying the paint. One other thing I wanted to mention is this shop is not made to be spraying paint in. It does not have a filtration system. It just, do not do this at home. Not recommending that you do what you are about to see me do. This is just for demonstration purposes only. And science. Science, right? <laughs> So what I've done is I got the door to the shop open. It's like in the 50s right now, but it's still raining. So I'm only gonna have the door open while I'm painting. I've got a little box fan on the other side of the boat that you can't see, but it's helping pull some of the air out. The air conditioning unit that you can probably hear running in the background is right above the camera. It is also blowing air towards the door. So it's kind of set up good enough to where I can get this thing painted, let all the fumes get out of here, shut the door, and that'll give the paint some time to dry in the actual heat and then we'll open up the doors again, paint the next coat, and then the same thing for the clear coat. I'm not really, really worried about the heat though because this is one hit wonder paint and I've tested this down into the low 40s. I've, I think at the lowest I've ever sprayed was 42 degrees and this stuff still dried just fine. Now two things I wanna mention about the compressor in this shop. I don't know how long it's been since it's been drained, but I just drained it and it got about two gallons of water out of the bottom of it. So I'm running actually two of these desiccant filters. I've got one on the line that I brought from my paint booth that I know is a clean hose, has never had oil in it before. 
and then I've got another one here on my gun. They're both brand spanking new. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably change out both of those in between coats so I can make sure that I'm not getting any contaminants inside my spray gun. As you can see, the color that we're spraying today is bright blue. We're going to spray at least two coats of this. I'll let you know if we have to do three, but I think it's only going to be two. And when we get done, we're going to go back over everything with a matte clear. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'll spray the first coat, follow along with me on that, and I'll let you know if we do a second or third coat. So yesterday was a giant epic fail for this paint job. Right as I started painting, the old compressor over here decided to freeze up and will not turn over anymore, so we were screwed. We did like as much as we could, but it just wasn't gonna work anymore. So we're back today. Anthony got a new compressor. We've got it hooked up over here. I had to bring some studio lights out here because the lighting in this shop absolutely sucks and we could not see anything when we were painting the other day. So I got better lighting now. I got the new compressor. I think we're ready to go. Let's talk about paint gun settings. So set up on the spray gun, I've got a dust can filter down here. I've got another one over on the tank so I can make sure that I'm not getting any water in my spray gun. I've got a digital air pressure gauge here. What you want to do is squeeze this halfway so that there's only air coming out, no paint, and set this to anywhere between 22 and 27 PSI. With this one hit wonder paint, I like to spray at about 22 PSI, so that's what I'm going to be using. For your fluid nozzle, which is going to be down here on the bottom in line with your needle, I'm running it about two turns open. So you close this all the way and open it up two turns. And then my fan, you just kind of have to play around with it and adjust it. Mine is about two and a half turns open right now. So I've got my PPS system all set up, filled up with this bright blue one hit wonder paint, and we're ready to go. All right, coat number two from the paint job from hell. This thing just never ends. So, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is this side that we had already got a coat of paint on, what we did is just scuffed it with a red Scotch-Brite pad since it's been sitting for a day. Now it's ready for the second coat. What you just saw me paint was the other side that had no paint on it at all. So the entire boat has one complete coat. Now I'm gonna go back and put the second coat on and then we'll be ready for clear. All right, so our last thing to do is spray the clear coat. We got two good coats of the blue on, so we're ready for clear. The clear that we're using today, like I mentioned earlier in the video, is this One Hit Wonder Matte Clear. It's more like a flat, but it, they call it matte, whatever. So I really like this clear because it dries really, really hard. It's very durable and it's very UV resistant, which is why we're gonna need it on this boat so that it doesn't fade the color underneath the clear coat. This mix is four to one. I'm not gonna go over how to mix clear coat in this video. It's not very difficult. There's a bajillion videos on YouTube. Just go watch it. So I've already got my PPS system loaded up. We're ready to go. The only difference in spray settings on this is going to be you spray this clear coat at 27 PSI instead of 22 like you do the base coat color. So clear coats, 27 PSI, base coats, 22 PSI.
So that paint job turned out looking amazing. That color is just super, super bright and it looks great on that boat. And not only does it look great, it's gonna hold up for a really, really long time. One Hit Wonder Hydro Dipping Paint is a lot more durable than most people give it credit for. We just did a durability test on Hydro Dipping versus Cerakote. I'll leave a link to that video right up here if you wanna go check it out. Spoiler alert, Hydro Dipping was really, really good. If you are interested in getting your hands on some of the One Hit Wonder products that we use today, I might know a guy that has a coupon code. I've got a coupon code down in the description box that you can use right down there and you will get $5 off your order at One Hit Wonder. And also, if you're interested in seeing more detailed boat painting, I just did one on my John Boat channel, Send It John Boats. I'll leave a link to it right up here. It's a three-part video series where I take you through how to use stencils and multiple colors on the same John Boat. Hit that like button if you like what you saw today and also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's roll the bloopers. If you are interested in getting your hands on some of the one hit, one hit, one, one hit, one, 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 how to use these same kind of, stick around, show to, show to how to do it, show to how to do it, show to how to do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna, um, I'm, I'm gonna add this to the bloopers because I don't know what in the world I was about to say. So be sure to subscribe if you subscribe. Why? What is the deal with pronouncing the word subscribe? There's no subscribe. Oh my God. Five dollars. Five. Is it five dollars or five percent? It's five. It's five dollars. That's right. We need to change the light color. We need to change the light color. It's been blue forever. Where's the remote? I, 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 I specifically remember saying, I'm gonna put this remote somewhere so that I can change the light colors and I won't forget where it's at. And I had no clue where I said I put it at. It's gone.